This video will explore how to compare population proportions. So let's first explore the target parameter. For example, suppose our research question is, are boys more likely to be bullies than girls? Our null hypothesis would be that the proportion of boys is equal to the proportion of girls that are bullies. Alternative would be the proportion of boys that are bullies is more than the proportion of girls. Just like before, when we did a difference in means, we can rewrite this hypothesis as a difference in proportions, just by subtracting the proportion of girls from both sides. Our new target parameter would be the proportion of boys minus the proportion of girls, or more generically, P1 minus P2. We're going to just explore the large sample case. So we consider this a large sample if the number of successes and the number of failures for each sample are at least 15. You can check this by doing n1 times p1 hat, n1 times q1 hat, n2 times p2 hat, and n2 times q2 hat, and checking to see each of those are greater than or equal to 15. Um, the two samples also need to be randomly selected in an independent manner from the two target populations. To create a uh, large sample confidence interval for proportions, you would use these formulas, where you, uh, your point estimate is just the difference in proportions, and you add and subtract the margin of error, just like before. And the margin of error formula looks very similar to the margin of error formula when we were just dealing with confidence intervals for single proportions, from a proportion from a single population. But instead of just P, instead of just P, Q over N inside the square root, we also have to add the second population's uh, standard error in there. So let's go back to the bullying example. School bullying is a form of aggressive behavior that occurs when a student is exposed repeatedly to negative actions from another student. In order to study the effectiveness of an anti-bullying policy at a Dutch elementary school, a survey of over 2,000 elementary school children was conducted. Each student was asked if he or she has ever bullied another student. In a sample of 1,358 boys, 746 claimed they have never bullied another student. In a sample of 1,379 girls, 967 claim they never bullied another student. Our research question is going to be to investigate the difference in proportion of boys versus girls that are bullies. We can do this with a 90% confidence interval. So let us construct a 90% confidence interval for the true difference in the proportion of boys versus girls that are bullies. Going back to our story, it said that there was 1,000 358 boys, 746 of which claim they have never bullied another student. Well, we don't want to know the number that have never bullied. We want to know the proportion of students that have bullied. So let's flip this around. We can do this by taking the sample, the sample size, and subtracting off the number that have never bullied, and that will give us the number that have bullied. We can use this to create um, a portion of our boy students that have bullied another student, so that will be 612 over 1358, which is about 45%. We can do the same for the girls, and we get that approximately 30% of the girls have bullied another student. We can take the difference in proportions, and that will be our point estimate for the difference in proportions of boys versus girls that are bullied, which is about 15%. Going back to our formula for confidence intervals, we take that point estimate for the difference and add and subtract the margin of error. So we need to figure out what the z alpha over 2 is. Well, if alpha is 10%, if our confidence level is 90% or alpha is 10%, and alpha divided by 2 would be 5%. Well, the z associated with a 90% confidence interval will be 1.645. And we can get this from the z table or the tables from confidence intervals earlier in the course. Now we can just plug the numbers into the formula to find the margin of error. So it's 1.645 times the square root of all these numbers. These q hat values were just calculated by doing 1 minus the p hat values. So uh, we 
multiply all these numbers, add them up, square root it, multiply by the 1.645, and we get 0 0.03. Add and subtract that from the 0.152, the proportion, uh, the difference in the proportion, so that of, of men, of boys versus girls that are bullied, and you get approximately uh, from 0.122 to 0.182. Interpreting this, we are 90% confident that the true percentage of boys that are bullies exceeds the percentage of girls that are bullies between 12.2% to 18.2%. We could have also done this as a hypothesis test. Just to show you the formulas, it's very similar. Um, we can do a large sample test of hypothesis um, about P1 minus P2. Our test statistic is Z, so it's the difference in proportion, sample proportions, minus what our hypothesized difference is over the standard error, which is the same standard error you would have calculated in the first part, except, well, no, it's really just the same standard error. Um, you can actually combine them if you wanted to into a single P hat and Q hat. You're gonna wind up with very similar results if you do this. And so it doesn't truly matter either way.